Figma Config 2025 is just around the corner. 6th May in San Francisco and 14th May in London. I've already got my tickets for the London event. We are all hyped about generative AI magic that they're about to drop. But this video isn't about what's coming. This video is actually about what's already here. While everyone awaits for config event, the Figma team has quietly been shipping some crazy good features throughout the year and I'm going to go over 14 new features that I absolutely love. The last two on the list are just insane. Some of these features are AI features that were added a while back but they have improved drastically. Now before we get started, if you're into Figma, UX or UI or just trying to stay ahead of the curve, I'll be breaking down everything from config 2025 as soon as it drops. So make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Now let's dive in. First up, we have the make image feature. Now I know that it was launched a while back, but it has improved quite a bit and there are new models added as well. We have GPT image one model, Google image in three model and Titan V2 model. Different models can help you create different kinds of images. For now, let's go with GPT one model. I have a few prompts up here. Let's copy the first prompt in here. This prompt is about creating a realistic photo style image of a UX designer doing wireframes on a digital tablet. Let's run it. By the way, I use ChatGPT to generate these prompts. If you need help in doing that, leave a comment below and I'll make a specific video for that. All right, there is the image that it has generated. It's looking amazing in my opinion. Right off the bat, this is a huge improvement in AI image generation from the past few months. It understood the prompt quite well and got the details right. It still struggles with the text, but I don't think so it's going to be a big deal in the upcoming few days or months because this technology is improving so fast. Notice that the image is 1024 by 1024 square image. Let's see if we can generate a different size in our next prompt. So our next prompt is about generating a hyper-realistic UI designer's desk. And in the end, let's add specific dimensions like 16 by 9 ratio and the size should be like 1920 by 1080. Let's run this. It's going to do its thing. And there you go. We can see that it got the desk quite good and the monitors and the keyboards all looking great, very realistic. But again, the text is a bit fuzzy and the dimensions that we mentioned were totally ignored. But don't worry, I'm gonna show you how you can generate images for different dimensions in just a few seconds. For now, let's run the third prompt and it's about vector illustration. And let's see how GPT image one model works. And there you have it. It has done a decent job and it's fine, but it's not looking like a modern illustration, you know? So let's do the same prompt, but this time let's choose Google Image Gen 3. And look at that. This illustration is much better than the previous one. So changing the model is definitely helpful. You just gotta watch out which model generates which kind of image better. Let's quickly go through the rest of the prompts. This new prompt is about a hand-drawn pencil sketch of a user flow. Let's go with the default GPT image one model and see what we get. All right, so it's done a decent job. It didn't quite understand the UX flow quite well and the spellings are a miss, you can see here, but it got the style quite right. Now let's try this with Google Image N3. All right, so this one is quite different from the GPT Model 1. It has gone into a very different direction, but honestly, I wouldn't say any of these is very good for this kind of hand-drawn sketches. Anyways, let's try out more. Now, I told you about how you can create different size of images. So to do that, just draw a frame of any size you like, then select it, and then go to Make Image and Prompt it. And there you have it, the image of exact dimensions of the frame. Image generation was not very good when it launched, but recently it got new model improvements and now I think it's definitely worth it and I use it a lot in my everyday product design life, you know. Speaking of images, brand new edit image feature is here. So the idea is to edit an existing image. So I have this image of me, just select it and run the edit image feature right from here. Now in here, you can give it a prompt to change your image. I have a few prompts that we're going to try on this image. It's gonna be fun, so let's do it. First prompt says, make me into a Lego style smiling character. All right, let's select it, edit image, paste in the prompt and run. It's gonna take a few seconds and boom, there you go. You have me as a Lego character and it made me smile as well. 
It got the things in the background right as well, and surprisingly, it even got the text right too. In my opinion, the results are quite impressive from this new edit image feature. Let's try out the second prompt and it says make me into futuristic robot and the background should look like a city of the future. And there you have it. It kept my pose, got the background quite well. I'm actually very surprised to see the results and I think so this is a very useful feature and just think about the possibilities. It's, it's gonna be amazing. Now let's try out the third prompt which is make me into a 2D cartoon illustration with a dark blue room. And there you go. I am a 2D illustration now and notice how the text is not distorted, it got the text right and it keeps getting better each day. I absolutely love this feature and I think so moving forward I'm going to be using this feature a lot. Alright, number 3 feature on the list is replace content. It was introduced in 2024 but it just got better. Let me show you how this works. So let's say that you have this team card component. Let's place an instance of this in here. Let's duplicate it once more and put them into an auto layout. Notice you get this little option here to drag this auto layout frame and as you drag it, it will automatically add another instance in the container because it has a repeating instance of the same card component. And not only that, if you do this, you get this option here to replace content or you can go in here to use this feature as well. Just make sure you have the parent frame selected and it should have repeating instances of the same component inside it. Now, if I click replace content, see what it does. It has changed the content of each card automatically. AI automatically understands the context of the card and updates the content accordingly. Currently, it still can't do the images, but it can work with all kinds of lists and table rows and it's a big time saver. Talking about time saving, next on the list is auto translate. It's not a new feature, it was actually added in config 2024, but it just had support for a few languages back then. But now if you select a frame, go to the actions and click auto translate, you can see we have a lot of languages to choose from. Let's go with German. And there you go, the whole design is now in German. I used to redesign all the screens in different languages, but now I save hours of work with just one click. Definitely one of my favorite features. Number five on the list is actually a new shortcut key. So let's say we have this instance of a team card component here. To jump to the main component, we can use this shortcut key, control plus option plus command plus K on a Mac or control plus alt plus shift plus K on Windows and it takes you to the main component. And if you want to go back to the instance, we can click the return to instance option over here. But there is a quicker way now. If you press the same shortcut key again, it takes us back to the instance. So now you can quickly switch between instance and main component with the same shortcut key, which I think is brilliantly done. It saves that annoying extra click. I think this is going to be the most used shortcut key for me moving onwards. Now, if you have no idea what a component is and thinking what the hell am I talking about, don't worry. Just go watch this video on my YouTube channel. It's a 100% free Figma course. I know it's not one of those quick crash courses that barely scratch the surface. This one takes you from an absolute beginner to pro level step by step. Link is in the description. Now let's move on. Number six is copy or duplicate local styles. This has been a long awaited feature and it's a very basic feature to be honest. You can now copy your local style like this and paste them in a different file or the same file just like this or you can duplicate the local style and modify it. I honestly don't know why it wasn't there before. It's not a very exciting feature but it was a very important feature. I don't know why it took so long to add. Next feature is also a very basic feature, resizable panels. I don't know why it wasn't there, but now you can resize both of these panels to adjust their width. Not very exciting, but definitely very helpful. Now let's go back to some exciting features. Number eight on the list is accessibility color checker. This is a very impressive feature. Here is how it works. Basically, you can select a text, and if you go into the fill options, you have this little option that says check color contrast. Click it and in here it will show you if the color contrast of this text against its background is accessible or not. Currently as you can see the AA contrast standard is not met and here it also shows the contrast ratio and if you click it it will show you the foreground color which is the color of our selected element in our case it's the text and the background behind the text which is in our case the purple color. And in this option here, you can also choose the category of the element that you have selected. In our case, we have a normal size text selected. So it has automatically detected that, but you can specify the category if you like. 
And in here, you can also select the standard that you want to meet. Currently, AA standard is selected, which is perfect for most of the cases, but you can select the AAA contrast standard as well, but achieving AAA standard is quite frankly very hard. Anyways, currently our light purple color of the text is not accessible against our dark purple background color. To fix that, we can change the color of the text from here, but see all the colors in this dotted pattern area are not accessible at all against the purple background. So the dotted area is kind of a no-go area. But see this divider line here. If I choose any color above this line, that is going to be accessible because it has a better contrast ratio against the background. And if I go below the line in the dotted area, the standard fails again. You can also click over here to automatically select the closest color that will be accessible just like this. If I change the hue of this color, you can see that it shows which area of the color is accessible. For example, for this green, there is a lot of shades of green that we can choose from that will be completely accessible against this purple color. Accessibility is essential and this is a very big step towards making our designs more accessible in Figma. Before this, I used to use a third party plugin for this and I'm glad that they added this feature. Next feature on the list is copy and paste variables and reorder modes and collections. Now in the variables panel, it is possible to copy a variable and paste it into another collection. To do that, right click on the variable and click copy and then go to another collection and press command V on Mac or control V on Windows to paste it. This was not possible before. You can also rearrange modes in the variables panel now. First one becomes the default mode automatically. And now if I select this frame, you can see the dark mode comes before the light mode right now. And if I drag it over on the right and check again, the order has been updated. This is very useful if you have multiple modes and want a specific mode to be your default mode. In the collections, you have a new option to reorder the collections as well. You can just drag and rearrange the collections however you like, just like this. You can also sort them alphabetically if you like. By the way, if you want to learn about variables in detail, check out this free masterclass where I teach everything about Figma variables from scratch. This is the only video that you will ever need to master variables in Figma, trust me. Link is in the description. Number 10 is the new eyedropper tool. I love this one. Let me show you how it works. Select a frame and in the fill, if I select the eyedropper tool, I can click on any color on the page and it gives that hex color value to this frame. But here's what's new. Let's undo this and select the eyedropper tool again See, when I hover on this purple color with the eyedropper tool selected, it is telling me the hex color value and the variable that this color is being used from. So now I can hold the shift key and then click on the color and it will assign that color variable to this frame instead of the direct hex color code. This is a huge time saver, especially if you work with variables a lot, which is a must if you want to be a pro Figma designer. And if there is a color that is not a variable yet, you can select the eyedropper tool, hover on that, and hold shift plus command on Mac or shift control on Windows, and then click on the color to add it to variables directly. Here you can select the collection in which you want to add it to, and give it a name or change the value. Very impressive feature in my opinion. Next feature on the list is a no-brainer, collapse layers. Now, instead of collapsing each layer one by one manually, you have this little option here to quickly collapse all the layers with just one click. Not a very fancy feature, but it was definitely needed, so worth the mention. Number 12 is lock image aspect ratio. In the dark ages, there was no option to lock the aspect ratio of the image. So if you had a responsive card like this one over here, when you resize it, the image would just fill in the area and you would lose half of the image. But now you can select this image, click this little option to lock the aspect ratio. And now when we resize, it maintains its proportions. And similarly, if we have these cards in a horizontal auto layout and set them to fill the container. Now, when we resize the parent frame, all the cards remain fully responsive and the images maintain their aspect ratio. This was a much needed feature and thankfully it's here. Next one is rename layers. This one is mind blowing. Let me show you how it works. So let's say we have this login frame and as you can see, just like a normal person and not a psychopath, I haven't properly named my layers. To be honest, I couldn't be bothered by it. But this stops now because now if I select this frame and go to the actions and select rename layers, see it magically understands the context of the design and rename the layers accordingly in the real time. To be honest, this feature was released a while back, but it wasn't good at all. 
but now it's stunningly accurate. It's now one of my favorite features, by the way. Finally, number 14, automatic prototyping. This is my top favorite. See, let's say we have this app design over here. And if I go into the prototype, you can see that I haven't done any interactive prototyping on this design yet. Let's look at the design to see how a prototype should work on this. On the splash screen, if I click this sign in button, it should take me to this login screen. And if I click this sign in button on the login screen, it should take me to the home screen. And if I click on the category card over here, it should take me to the category page. And finally, if I click the home button over here, it should take me back to the home screen. Now I could manually create these interactions, but as you know, that is a very time consuming process. The good news is that now, if I select all these frames and go to the actions, I have this option here to add interactions. This will use AI to automatically create a prototype for us. Let's run this and see how accurate it is. All right, it has created interactive prototype for us and it seems that it is 100% accurate. You can click over here to preview it. Let's have a look at the prototype that it has created for us. This sign in button takes us to the login page. This sign in button takes us to the home page. This get started button directly takes us to the home page. Then this category card takes us to the category page and this home button takes us back to the home page, just like how we expect it to work. In the preview, let's test it out. Sign in takes us to the login page and then this sign in button takes us to the home page. And now here we can select the category and go to the category page. And then finally home button takes us back to the home page. I'm absolutely shocked by the accuracy of this. I didn't expect it to be that accurate. Now, of course we can continue to modify the interactions and change the animations and triggers and whatnot. But in all honesty, I think so this is one of the best features that Figma has released in this year. So that's it. These are my favorite new features in Figma. Drop a comment and let me know what are your favorite Figma features. And don't forget, Figma Config is happening on 6th of May in San Francisco and on 14th May in London. And I'll be covering all the new updates here. So if you haven't already subscribed, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And like always, thank you for watching. See you in the next one.